वेलकम टू स्पॉटलाइट मैं हूं आपकी होस्ट अमिता जॉइन मी वीकली टू गेट इंस्पायर्ड बाय गेस्ट हु विल शेयर देयर सक्सेस स्टोरीज एंड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल इवेंट्स आवर गेस्ट टुडे वेयर्स मल्टीपल हैट्स ही हैज सैट इन मेनी एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस एज टीचर मेंटर प्रिंसिपल एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर इट इज माय ऑनर टू वेलकम टू आवर शो द फाउंडर ऑफ गुरु तेग बहादुर इंटरनेशनल स्कूल इन कनाडा मिस्टर संजीव धवन Welcome to Spotlight sir. Uh thank you very much for uh, having me. Well we are excited to learn about the many accomplishments you've had not just with the school but with everything that you do. But usse pehle aapke bare mein kuch bataiye like uh, where did you grow up and how did you come to Canada? Well I was uh, born in India in Punjab and uh, a small uh, town border area that is uh, came Karn where an important war between India and Pakistan took place. i was just a couple of days uh when that uh, happened oh. so uh, i did my masters uh, in india uh in science and then i did my uh, mba so i was uh, teaching uh at dav college i became principal of uh, a college when i was uh, 34 years of age normally we become principal when we yeah. lose all our hairs <laughs> uh i uh, cleared a ugc task that i got the highest possible scholarship uh you can have in india for a research and i was uh, second in university in my masters so uh education was my love uh though my doc- uh, dad wanted me to be a doctor mm-hmm. and i had to trick uh many time uh to him uh because i wanted uh, to be a teacher uh from the early childhood so there are many stories i have with my dad sending me because he was a doctor he sent me to uh uh college to do pre medical so then i find out uh, an excuse that there are 80 students in my class there's uh, a lot of noise i can't tolerate he then sent me to another college where there is uh, a big grounds and very peaceful and then i find another excuse uh and uh, tell him no this is a problem there those are big stories i won't go into that but basically my dad wanted me to be a doctor I wanted to be a teacher and ultimately I found my way. Well, you stood up for yourself, love it. Uh and the reason I wanted to be a teacher is because of three teachers who played a very important role in my life. Uh one was an awesome teacher. Uh his name was Keval Singh. I do want to remember him today. Uh he was such a force that he motivated me and can you believe when I was in grade 6 I wrote 19 pages essay on Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Wow, it's good to have uh, role models like. And then I have a very bad teacher uh who beat me up for no reasons mm. like so all those things and there was another teacher who actually will check my exams and then will ask me Sanjeev can you check my uh check the exams of all of the students wow. in the class? Okay. So that actually made me interested in doing all that work looking at how people write mm. so those three impacts positive as well as negative made me think that uh, because teachers play a very important role in the life uh, i will say that uh, they are the nation builders they awakens the souls mm-hmm. so they are not just laborers working uh, uh, as uh, workers mm-hmm. so that had uh, a feeling from my childhood and that's why i wanted to be a teacher and i became a teacher mm-hmm. and that's uh, great for us that you're here in canada as well but but what brought you to canada and uh, were there any challenges establishing yourself here uh first of all what brought me to canada yeah uh there are hundreds of reasons i'll mention uh, only few mm-hmm. because it's not uh, a very simple thing so it's not clear cut uh, yeah. multiple factors i'll tell you my brother was murdered by terrorists I'm sorry. that was one reason mm-hmm. during the days of terrorism in punjab i was attacked that was the second reason and you know i started a school there and there i invited the education minister of punjab he comes and he announced a grant for my school oh. and then after a week uh, he uh, his secretary calls me that the check for the school grant is ready but bring uh 50% cash 
to give to the minister so that uh, we can get the check. I never took that check. I didn't mm -hmm. accept that. I uh, started, uh, planned to start a college there. And, you know, there was a college education minister. His son came to my house for months and months to study personally from me. And one day he tells me, uh, Mr. Dhawan, if you need any help at some time, so please uh, don't hesitate. So I got permission from university, Guru Nanak Dev University in Amritsar, to start a college. So we set up everything. Uh, DPI, the government uh, of Punjab's the main director, allowed it. And then the file has to go to the minister and he has to sign. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, his son studied with me and he said, if you have ever any work, uh, contact me. I went to him uh, to Chandigarh and he says, bring 25 lakh rupees. At that time, like 20 years back, 25 lakh rupees in India was also a really a big sum. I didn't have it. And even if I had, I will not do it. Mm. So all those things uh, uh, made me look uh, someplace where you can actually uh, do things the way you want. Mm -hmm. And that moved me to the Canada. And when I came here, you asked me that uh, any struggles. Yeah, because yes. usually when people come from overseas from different professions, there's always a struggle to get back into that profession. Uh, that's very true, and it happens. So when I came here, so I applied for a school board job. Uh, and you know what they told me? You're highly qualified. You're mm. overqualified. Mm. You need to uh, find a job in a university. Either yeah, you should teach in a university. Then I tried to contact uh, the universities. And uh, the impression I got, number one, they hire people from Yale, they hire people from Howard, or they have their own graduates who are PhDs from here, say Toronto University or others. So basically I saw the doors are shut. Mm. So what I do, I ask a friend of mine, he said, um, I need a job. And he tells me, okay, come tomorrow, get ready. So I is uh, in a normal suit, and uh, today I'm not wearing a tie, but on that day I wear the tie also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he said, get ready by 7 o'clock. I said, fine. So Let's I, leave it at a suspense for now. There's more to find <laughs> out about this wonderful journey, but right now it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to the founder of Guru Tegh Bahadur International School, which was recently named as the number one school by the Fraser Report. So that's an amazing accomplishment. But we left our viewers off at a suspense as to how you came to establish yourself in Canada. So, sir, continue the wonderful story. Uh, yeah, so what happened? I was ready in the morning, 7 o'clock. So a van comes and uh, there were couple of people there. So I sat in this and slowly, slowly, slowly vans passes through uh, the streets, roads, and then we uh, reached to a village. And then there was, uh, uh, it was a tomato farm. So mm -hmm. we started plucking tomatoes and after an hour or two or three, I started thinking. I did masters, I taught in universities, I was principal of colleges what I'm going to do here, right? Not that any work is uh, lower to me, but uh, naturally, if you have uh, spent 20 years into education, so it really, you want to be in the field of education. Mm -hmm. After three hours, I told the guy, can you drop me home? He said, no, the van will go back at five o'clock. So you have to stay. So I then gave him the bucket of tomatoes, I said, you take it, put it in your uh, thing, and uh, I will be here at five o'clock. And then I started walking in the farms and uh, uh, looking up in the sky. And I told myself something. I said, you know, there's a quote, Punjabi, Hindi, Japan, Kenya, Pare Farsi, Vichitil, Dekho Ji Kismat Dekhil. So I thought that, and I talked to, uh, myself and uh, to the sky. And same day evening, I received a call from uh, a radio station 
they want someone to write the news. Mm. I said, I love to do that. Mm-hmm. I did it for a couple of days and then uh, they said, can you read it also? So I said, sure, let's give it a try. Though I was never uh, having any degree or qualifications in journalism or in the media field, I said, let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. And I started writing. Then I worked almost five years as a radio host. I did many different types of shows, including news, talk shows, and musical programs. So that was one. But on the other hand, you know, the media sometimes here, it's not also an easy job to make your, uh, to meet your ends. Mm-hmm. So at one point of time, I was working in the morning from eight o'clock to one o'clock in a law firm as a legal assistant. From one o'clock to uh, 4.30, I was working with a television channel and doing interviews the way you're doing, talking Mm -hmm. to the celebrities, talking to the ministers, talking to Hollywood stars, Bollywood stars, and politicians from uh, uh, India as well as Canada. Mm -hmm. And from five o'clock to 11 o'clock, I was working with Sushali, so where I was delivering uh, chickens. Mm -hmm. And one day, very interesting thing happened. So I went, I knocked the door of someone to deliver the chicken, and they said, sir, we just saw you interviewing the immigration minister five minutes back. How could you reach here so quick? Mm. So I said, it's, we did it in the morning. So that was uh, a multiplicity of uh, things. So there was, uh, at one point when after doing all this, uh, one friend of mine who lives here in uh, Brampton, he said, Sanjeev, uh, you, were, you always loved teaching. And he knew about that I wanted to be a teacher at home, back home, because we were close friends and studying Mm -hmm. together, that my dad wanted me to be a doctor. He said, what about that? I said, I tried, uh, but uh, it's a long process, and I have to take care of my family. Mm -hmm. Uh, He said, no, why don't you start tutoring the kids Mm -hmm. in evening for uh, three, four hours, rather than going to Mm Sushale for delivering uh, uh, those chickens? Mm -hmm. I like the idea. And I was by that time a television anchor. Mm -hmm. So I started announcing uh, in my own program that if you want uh, any help in, and (laughs) that got me kids uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And when I went through this whole process for a couple of uh, years, I found that uh, there's a real need to have educational institutions here, which can blend the foundation base of what we teach back home and the new strategies and uh, technologies used here in Canada so that it blends because there is a gap. Yeah. Uh, everything back home is not bad. Everything here is not good. There are beautiful things here and there are beautiful things there. So if you can mm-hmm. choose from them and make a mix of it and that brought me to start a school. So when did this come into being, this amazing institution that has been recently ranked one? Uh, Well, in September 2015, rather I'll say the idea to start the school came in my mind in February 2015. Mm. My son, he studies at Western University, was at that time he was studying there. Mm -hmm. I called him, I said, uh, I want to start a school. He said, are you crazy? I said, I'm crazy. (laughs) So We planned, and in three months, I found a place. I worked with the Ministry of Education. I worked with the city of Brampton. I worked with all different departments, and we put together a school by September 2015. Where there's a will, there's a way. You you really knew that you wanted to get into the education system, and with the amazing journey that you've had, you still came to where your heart was, yeah. the Guru Tegh Bahadur International School. So we want to find out more about the school. Sure. But now it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to the founder of Guru Tegh Bahadur International School, which was recently ranked number one by the Fraser Report. So tell us 
about the school and it sounds very interesting where you've combined the best of the Indian educational system, the best of the Canadian educational system and it's all inclusive. Uh, well, basically, uh, we started the school, as I mentioned earlier, in September 2015. Uh, we are focused on certain things and that's the reason why uh, in just two years, we became one of the uh, number one schools the Fraser uh, for Ontario. So the Fraser report gives marks for different aspects. They have nine indicators. And on the basis of those nine indicators, they give marks. And our school, along with some other schools of Ontario, they got 10 out of 10. So there are around, around 10, 15 schools out of 3,064 uh, wow. who got that 10 out of 10 and uh, they are ranked as number one. So why we got that? The main important reason is the number of students in a class. Mm. So we don't take more than 16 students in any class. So that's number one, because when you do that, so you give individual attention. So that helps a lot to the kids, because if there are 30 students or 40 students or even 27, 28, so the teacher has a, a, a lesser time to attend each and every kid. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, every month we hold a parent-teacher meeting, which means that uh, it's not a parent-teacher meeting actually now. It's a parent-principal meeting. Mm. Uh, so I meet all the parents. It takes three days from morning till evening. So I meet every parent uh, of the student who's studying in the school so that I get first-hand information from the parents. What's their feedback? What are their concerns? Uh, what they feel we should add, what they're happy with, what they're not happy with. So parents are engaged and that makes a lot of difference. And they get a regular feedback and we get a regular feedback. So if we have any issues, they don't prolong. Mm. I don't say my school is the best in the world. We do our part of mistakes every day. But when there's a close uh, cooperation and you get all the feedback very quickly, so it's very easy to fix it and make it mm. better. Mm. So that's the second part. The third are two important things, our mathematics strategy and our language strategy, because the Fraser Institute is based on the Ministry of Education's EQTAS. Mm. So they look into that part. And there, the main tests are your language, which means reading, writing skills, your mathematical skills for grade three, for grade six. Mm -hmm. So we have a different strategy than other. So what we do in mathematics, we have 11 uh, teaching periods in a week. And from grade one to grade eight, three teachers teach each class. So those 11 periods are divided into three parts. Mm -hmm. So three periods goes for mental math and multiplication tables. So one teacher discuss that. So th Students in our school, they don't use calculator up to grade mm. 10. Oh, sorry, grade eight. eight. So they okay. always uh, do everything in your head. Mm. And the people who are good in calculation, they are good in decision making. Mm. And their mental horizons, they, are, they automatically improve and they go beyond uh, the box. Mm. So we do that. Along with that, we use a very specialized strategy, which is Canadian concept. That's called jump math strategy. Mm. And that strategy is being tested by Toronto Sick Children and other institutions they have done research on it. It's a very useful strategy. So our second teacher <coughs> used that. So, so we have, uh, we use uh, a Canadian concept that's called jump math strategy. And there, the teacher, he basically, or she basically teach four periods and those strategies are checked, tested and researched by Toronto Sick Children Hospital, many other institutes. Vancouver board. So one teacher focus on that, which simplifies math concepts for better understanding of the students. And then the third teacher will use uh, the complex models, complex situations. So we can give all this to one teacher also. But the thing is, every teacher will have his or her own emphasis, his own liking. So we have divided, means division of labor, which leads to specialization. So everyone is focused on there. So when they work together as a team, it gives good results. And similarly in our English, normally here, the focus is on reading and writing. Uh, 
But in India, we were focusing on grammar, vocabulary, and all that stuff. So we have two teachers. One teacher teaches exactly the same way, uh, the way they teach in Canadian schools, English. But the second teacher, to build the strong foundation, you can see many kids who are in grade 7, 8, 9, 10, when they write, their grammar is not proper, their spellings are not good. So yeah. the second teacher, uh, they're very good in speaking, you know what I mean, slang and all that stuff. But when you have to write, yeah. it becomes a big difficulty. So the second teacher focus on uh, the grammar as well as the vocabulary. And for our grade five students and onwards, we start using Ivy League vocabulary, which is basically the Ivy League universities of America, the top universities. Wow. When you have to enter into those universities, there's a SAT exam and you really need to score very high. And the vac vocabulary for that test, which is required, we start doing it from uh, grade five. And I'm very happy to tell you that uh, day before yesterday, one of my students grade 12 said that she got admission in an American university with $80,000 scholarship. Congratulations, such a well thought out process, individualized attention, more use of uh, our brain, if you want to put it that way, rather than focus on technology. There's so much that has gone into this. That's why in such a short span, you have achieved so much. So we are so happy for you, the Guru Tech, Bahadur International School. There's more to find out, so little time today. Where can our viewers find out more information? Well, they can uh, visit school's website. So there's some information there. Uh, school's Facebook page, we update almost every day. So whatever happens, say for example, uh, last week Toronto Sun covered the school uh, for being ranked first in Ontario schools. So they did a beautiful story, we put it there. So our students, they are not just studying. They are learning Western dance. They are learning Bhangra. Uh, Western dance we are doing with uh, collaboration with uh, uh, Synergy uh, Performing Arts. They are learning Bhangra. They learn Shabki. And we have a collaboration with YMCA of Brampton where they go, they learn swimming, they learn basketball. So it's not just teaching, Academy. teaching. We don't it's want them to be, uh, you know, the bookworms because you don't become successful in the life. You need if to be all round. So you have to be all round. So we are engaging them into robotic club. So Saturday we have full day different type of activities, which are extracurricular activities. And every day, uh, four days actually in a week, they have one and a half hour physical fitness classes where they actually play outside and all the things. So, so all in all, it's an all-inclusive, not just the academics. You become an all-rounder uh, in every uh, walk of life. That's so right. So let's go find out more information about Guru Tegh Bahadur International School. Thank you so much, Mr. Davan, for coming and talking uh, to us today. Well, pleasure is all mine. Thanks for having me. And all the best uh, with not just the school, but the upcoming facilities too. Oh yes, we yes. are. Uh, I'm happy to tell that we are starting a new school, means a second school in Brampton uh, with a bigger facility, uh, so that uh, we can cater to more and more uh, students and we can help them. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you once again. Thank you. So that was Mr. Sanjeev Davan, who has inspired us to take a look at our education system because our children are our future. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Thank you for watching us. Continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and write to us at spotlight at ethnicchannels.com. Until next week, this is Amita signing off, encouraging you to support new educational systems. <laughs>